Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at how to set out a segmental arch. Now currently we're going to do this on a drawing board, um, a technical drawing board, and we've drawn it so far at a scale of 1 to 5, just to get all of the content onto one board, and we've also used the board as a, a portrait method. Now obviously if you're going to do this uh, in the real life situation, you'd do this at a scale 1 to 1, a full scale drawing, you could utilise that on a sheet of plywood, etc. But in reality, the same principles apply. So we're going to talk our way through this. So a segmental arch is a little bit different from setting out a semicircular where you're going from your springing point to springing point using your central line as a striking point. The striking point is going to be far further down the central line. So we need to establish that first. And that's one of the key elements of setting out a segmental arch. Now, one of the oldest rules of thumb is that uh, whatever your span is, your width of your opening, whether that's a door or a window, the rise of your arch, the rise from your your flat line to your uh, intradus is generally 10 millimetres for every 100 millimetres. Now what we've got here is a 440 brick pillar and a 440 brick pillar with an opening of 460 to make it match for brickwork. Again, this has been drawn at 1 to 5. So. Our initial task is to use our rise and knowing our width, we're going to go up to the uh, centre of that rise. And because that's 460, we're going to go up 46 millimetres. So using a scale ruler, I'm going to put a small mark and that's going to indicate where our cards are used. Now, what we're now going to use is our ruler and we're going to put a line from our springing point to our rise height, and that will give us what we call a chord. We do that on both sides. And it'll become apparent why we're doing a, almost like a, a triangulation in a second. Now we're gonna use that to get some reference points. And what we do is we use the three points of the triangulation of the chord to get our reference point. And what you wanna do is place your point of your compass and you want your pencil to meet the centre and what you're going to do is put a very faint line on the outer edge, a curvature of a line. You're then going to do the same at the bottom and then you're going to rotate the compass around so your pin is on the opposite side. Check that it's still true and then you're going to do another line and another line. You're going to do the same on the opposite side top and bottom, the same, rotation and check. And what you'll notice now, you have four reference points. Now using a ruler, you're going to match that reference point to that reference point to the centre line. So you're going to go from here to here, and you're going to go right through where I put CL for centre line. Same again, same again. That now, there, is our striking point. Now before we do move on, we're just going to quickly rub these out, because they're not relevant anymore. We're also going to rub out the card. And the flat line. We're going to leave the central line, because we're going to utilise that later. What we're now going to do, is place the compass on our new striking point. Now remember, the striking point is the centre of the circle. And we're going to go from our springing point, and we're going to go nice and over. You can already see now, the curvature of the arch, the segment of the arch, is there. Another one is to utilise the striking point again, because we need to find the angle of the skew back the section of the, the segmental arch that's on an angle. Some people call these skew back arches because of that. Uh, it's the same terminology really. So, striking point, springing point, draw a nice faint line on the angle. Same on the opposite side. And then, because we're gonna draw a soldier arch, we need to do the height. 
Now the height is from the intradus, the inside line, to the extradus, the outside line, and we know that a standard UK metric brick is 215 mil long. So we're going to go 200 and 15 mil and put a nice line at the top. And using our compass again from the striking point, we're going to open this back up now, right the way up to this top line. And I'm going to draw that in. We can now rub out this line. This isn't relevant. The top of the central line now, we're going to keep it within the arch. And now the whole purpose of this drawing is to discover what the voussoir is. Now the voussoir is the French term for an axed or wedge-shaped brick. So you'll notice on axed arches or gauged arches that the bricks aren't standard bricks, unlike a rough ringed arch, they are cut. Now these can be done in a factory or if you're going to do it in this sort of style, they can either be done by hand or a, pes a petrol driven saw or an electric uh, disc cutter. But what you want to do, the main crux of it is you want to keep the top line, the extra dust, you want to keep that as a standard width of a brick. In this case, because it's stood as a soldier at 65mm. So we're going to use the central line to go 32.5mm either side and use the striking point to find out how the wedge is. So, get your scale ruler. And you're going to go... Put a mark on one side mark on the opposite side and then you're going to use your striking point you're going to put a line down vertically now on the drawing it may not seem like it's such a huge impact but when you measure the bottom of that brick that's 50 millimeters now obviously at 50 millimeters um, you've got a difference from 65, so you've got 15 mil to shave off, so you've got 7.5 millimetres either side, and that's what you would use as your wedge shape template. Equally, you can judge how your skew bat's going to look, and if you complete your drawing and, and gauge out your brickwork over the top of this arch, you can also discover how your creepers, the bricks that go over the top of the arch, are going to look. This is also useful if you want to completely fill in one side because you've got to understand if that voussoir is going to completely make it all the way to the end. There's a couple of things you can adjust. You can adjust the width of the head or you can adjust the width of the joint. Now, if we were to put 10 millimeter joints on, I'll give you an indicator of how this would work. We'll do a 10 millimeter mark and then from the striking point again, And so on and so forth, as you went for another 65mm header, like so. Like so, another 10mm joint. Like so, and you would completely fill that in. If it didn't work, that's where you've got to reevaluate and calculate and divide the difference, the missing difference back into the top bricks. So it may be that you adjust the, the width of your head by a couple of millimetres from 65 to 62 for sake, or you could also adjust the bed joints, or the perp joints, should I say. You could adjust that from 10 mil down to whatever it needs to be. It just depends on how it will look overall. And that technically is how you draw a segmental arch. So just for recap, just remember, once you've got your flat line, it is 10 mil as a rule of thumb for every 100. So in this case, it was a 460 opening, so we've gone 46 mil up. You draw on your cards. You then use your compass to get your reference point, your four reference points that give you your angle, your striking point. You can then rub that out. You utilize that to get your curvature of your arch. And you also utilize your striking point to get your, your skew back, your angle of your arch. And that is how you draw out a segmental arch.